Thank you all. Good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 367. Uh, each week um, we meet uh, to review the uh, answers uh, given uh, in the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's uh, based in Wimbledon uh, in the UK. Um, you can find him at wasaweb.net. And uh, Tim Kepper is um, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he is uh, a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. I forgot to mention that Masataki is a Google product expert in the uh, um, AdSense uh, community. And uh, um, Richard Hearn um, is, uh, um, well, he, he, he uh, looks after higher echelon uh, sites. Uh, he's based in uh, Thailand and sometimes Ireland. Um, you can see, you can find Richard, contact Richard via redcardinal.ie. Okay, so we have five questions uh, to uh, look at today. Um, and uh, first one is from Ross Raffin. It's titled Local SEO for a Business Serving Multiple Cities. Um, he said, if my business is located in City 1, uh, will it help local SEO to include a list of cities such as serving city two city three and city four on core pages yeah you can certainly create location pages um two things i would say to you is one uh make them unique to that as such so the way you can make them unique is <laughs> um, because obviously the, the the actual service is the same. Um, so that descriptor would, would, you know, on the page would be the same. But the way you can make it unique would be um, who is the team that services that area. Those would kind of change, you know, like who are the guys that service that area. Uh, this is Bob, you know, he's local to blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, give them a little bit of an intro bio kind of thing. Um, reviews for those areas, specific to that, those areas, you can, you know, have them pulled onto that page. Um, are there any particular things? I don't know what the business service is, but um, for example, if you're a plumber, you know, is that a hard water area? Is City 3 a soft water area? You can just give some info on normal things that you encounter in, in, in you know, et cetera, like that. And the biggest one of all is don't create these just for the sake of creating them. Make sure you actually service that area. There is nothing worse for a business when people find you in the search results, phone you up and they go, oh no, we don't cover that city. So just make sure you cover the city. Excellent, Tim. All right. Uh, anybody else? I just okay. want to ask a question. Yeah, go on. Uh, just, just curious about, so what, what's the deal, do you think, these days? Like, obviously, if you have a service area page, um, that's fine as long as you do, you're not creating doorway pages. So what, what's the deal? Like, in general, is it, what, what, what would be the threshold for this business? Like, would you expect them to have different teams in each service area or like, what, what would you say? Well, well if they don't, if they don't have, <coughs> so in theory, they should only have one GMB listing and mark it as a service area and, you know, mark those clearly define those service areas within it um, on their GMB listing. 
you could go down the road of um, creating ones from, you know, employees' homes and marketing them as a service area business for that location. But what you need to be pretty careful of in that situation is if your service areas overlap, it'll start flagging it up to Google and Google will go or GMV will go, well, hang on a second. Um, if these are overlapping, then technically this is just one business. So we're so, assuming so are we, that this guy has only got one location, as in one facility, one building. Yeah, so I would only have one GMB listing for that. Yeah. And you, you can mark the actual um, uh, service areas in your dashboard. So I serve this location, this location, and this location. Okay, and just tell me then, like, I'm just curious, because it's not my, it's not an area I work in general, but in, in general is the local stuff, but I'm just curious. So let's just say that he had four offices or he had four, so he had four locations and he was servicing four. Would he be able to have four GMB accounts for one for each of those locations? Yeah, yeah. Or, if he had a location there, yeah, they had like a local office. Yeah, you could have those for that, certainly. And that would that would even um, and in that instance, on those location landing pages, you would have the hours, the address of that specific location, the the local number, as well as maybe you've got a national phone number. You know, mm -hmm. you've got like maybe you've got an out of hours, so provide both numbers, the local and the national number, um, and that does certainly make it easier because you can even provide. Um, directions to that location as such um, so that's also like uh, another you know way of providing some unique content onto that page um, okay cool so yeah it, it is slightly easier to do because there's an actual physical location there it's for interesting it's one of those that, that giving directions is something I think it can be quite good especially for getting uh, featured snippets you know, it's as in like how to get to X when you're coming from Y. I, I, it's one thing I like that I don't I don't think people pay enough attention to for local businesses, I think, as well. I do it quite a lot with hotels. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can I, different, many different routes that, it, you know, you can actually yeah. get a bit of content out of that. Yeah. In fact, I think I've got one for... Um, Which actually does a lot of, um, which actually does a fair bit of traffic. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's hard to get to Phang Na Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, yeah. there's so many ways, like, you know, via the airport, coming on a boat, coming in a taxi, all the different, like, I think it's overlooked. It's one easy way to get some actually quite nice yeah. content that actually, it, it's getting you in front of eyeballs that are actually very, they're very far down the path of, of, of buying, of purchasing something, you know? So, yeah. 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 Can, and you get your brand. Look, yeah, this is the thing that I try and explain is you, you've got to try and get your brand in front of people whilst they're doing their research. And yeah. the more your little brands popping up when they eventually get down to, okay, that's the area we want to, we want to look at. Then they may they may see you popping up within the choice of hotels and go ah I've already I've already come across them yeah, yeah absolutely and they provided me some some utility already you may not even say it yeah consciously, maybe subconsciously that you, you associate yeah. that as a brand that's helped you already totally yeah we we sort of hijacked this one so I'm I'm sorry to this guy uh, obviously he doesn't have a hotel but hopefully it makes some sense for other local businesses as well yeah. Um, I mean, I do it for taxis also, and there's a lot you can do. So, so if if a taxi covers X amount of areas, you know, um, you, you can do that. And then, of course, you can include, um, you know, estimates of pricing because people search how much does it cost to get from X to Y. And then you provide them with the additional info. Well, if you're going to catch a train... It's 50 quid if you get the cab. You get a cab, it's 15 quid. Uh, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, let's um, move on to number two. And let's, um, 
there's any more here? Okay, let's go to number two. Um, Brenda Michelin has been working diligently uh, on uh, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, recently, and we thank her for a valuable contribution. Uh, Brenda asks the question title, is creating a good URL structure for your images still true? Um, and she provided the link to an article which can be seen on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, and asks, is this still true? Brackets from a 2018 article. Um, the, the article goes on to, to state, uh, create good URL structure for your images. This is an interesting SEO tip. Google revealed that they use the file path and the file name in order to better understand and rank images. This is an actual ranking factor that Google is sharing. This is a, a very useful tip for ranking images. For example, uh, if um, your images uh, are uh, of uh, different kinds of products, instead of doubling them all into a generic slash assets or slash images uh, folder, um, you could in theory create a, a more organized structure to uh, organize the images into something more meaningful like uh, slash men's or slash women's in order to organize the images of men's and women's clothing. Uh, and then there's a, a, a URL, uh, a search engine journal URL, which can be seen on the uh, WSEO Questions Facebook group. Your thoughts, guys? So, so for me, if this was a small site and I didn't have anything else to do, or even a large site, this would probably be the last thing I would look at because um, just using a proper just you know your actual the, the actual file name and and i'm saying excluding the structure just you know a decent file name using your um you know your the, obviously the, the, which becomes the title and then uh, better describing it with with the old text um sees most of my images appearing with in search results where they provide you know, uh, images related to, you know, a search query. So for me, this would just be, it just, it just wouldn't even, you know, when we're doing images, that just is standard practice. It just wouldn't really for me even be a thing of going through a site and fixing images just for the sake of that, you know, it, that would be like, oh shit, you know, I've still got 10 hours to waste on this client and now I'm going to squeeze him in somewhere. It's just like, that would be the last thing that I would be looking at personally. It, it, it would be something though that um, you could include in, in the design when you're designing a site or, a, you know, website's architecture because... Uh, as 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 each new image is added, um, if you follow, yeah, 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 for sure. If it's a brand new site and then you're going to be migrating over or whatever, yeah, for sure. But you know, um, it probably only makes sense in those really, really competitive niches where marginal advantages can translate into big money. You know, that's. Like it's not going to make sense for most people the overhead of doing this it's interesting if you look at the page actually and if you look at the, in in the web archive the old page you know they previously said like use descriptive file names and the new what what this is really about is is the new there are new guidelines which say uh, google uses the url path as well as the file name to help it understand your images consider organizing your image content so that earls are constructed logically it's very difficult, it, like most CMSs and most large large content systems, it's gonna be very difficult to do this. The costs of doing this and the costs in terms of production, ongoing production costs of maintaining this are gonna be pretty high. So like I say, I, I'd say this is the, the only people, the only type of sites that are gonna use this are those really big sites that are in in verticals where, where like highly competitive verticals where it might make sense well, otherwise, I'd say most people like if they, you know, if they use file names, they're probably going to get more advantage than 
than the URL path itself, I'd say. That's my guess. There's plenty of value in images, by the way, just to just to give a, a, an alternate view of this. Like, I work with, with some sites that do a lot of traffic via image search, and like, especially in, like some new sites that do a lot, and we've done a lot of work in in terms of the AMP pages and the images that we're providing to AMP and to regular HTML documents. And it's certainly, you know, if you can optimize, you, you will see traffic. You can get traffic from this. So it depends on who you are. I mean, if you're transactional, yeah, maybe it matters a lot also because you want to get people into your products. But if, like, if you're going after traffic for traffic's sake, so, you know, if you're getting paid by advertising, like, the more traffic you can generate, the better. And it is sort of low-hanging fruit on a lot of sites with, with images. Like when you look at the HTML and what they're actually outputting on the page um, and some of the easy ways that they can automate this, um, I always think it's, it is low-hanging fruit. And for, for at least some sites, it makes a lot of sense to go in and optimize this stuff for sure. OK. All right, moving on to number three on our run list. We're about halfway there tonight. Um, this one from the Nomad Sam. Um, it's titled "Internal Linking Accent uh, Anchor Text um, Question." I'm just wondering if um, the Nomad Sam is uh, is teasing us, but um, anyway, he said, uh, "Is it acceptable to have something like um, a related article colon five best cameras for travel?" as an anchor text for internal linking um, as opposed to having a natural sentence like uh, uh, when I was traveling last year, I picked up one of the best cameras for traveling and it served me well, blah, blah, blah. Um, he said that the reason I ask, uh, and please um, uh, note um, that um, I I've Clicked the wrong button, got, got ahead of myself. Um, he said, uh, I've heard from various sources that the latter is the proper way to do it. He said, I need to do this across 100 pages for a website in another language. So the, the first method is really manageable for me if it's accept acceptable. Uh, is there any real SEO difference uh, in either method or is there a right and wrong way to do this? Thanks to everyone. I, I just just going to jump in and just mention that I think like that we've lost a little bit of context here because in his question, some of the two examples he gives, there are links within those. So we've lost the context just a little bit here. In the original, so he gives two options. And in the original, it's related article, colon, five best cameras for travel. In that example, related article is the anchor. And in the second example, he says, when I was traveling last year, I picked up one of the best cameras for traveling and it served me well. And I think that I think if memory serves me right, the, the anchor in that was best cameras for traveling. So they are the two things he was comparing. So just we lost that little bit of nuance just to add it back in. Thank you, Richard. And your comments on it? I'll let the other guys go for it. <laughs> So for me, if if this is uh, on articles and because you said related to or related articles, and I'm assuming you're going to be giving five, sort of four or five, five is the typical if there's related to. I would stick with the quick, easy to read that people are actually going to go with. If you're providing them with an additional paragraph, which they then have to find the link within it to click through to it. To me, that's not a natural kind of user experience. Yeah, where do we go from here, guys? But there was a good conversation. I mean, like, you know, it got into a little bit let's say theoretical stuff with the conversation and some of the comments that went back. I mean, Tim makes a good point. We don't know the context and context matters. So, you know, you can give advice and you can say that X is better than Y, but you have to qualify that and say it's better than Y in this context. But there could also be context where actually it's, it's inferior. So, yeah. 
you know, you, you've got to, you've got to be careful. And he could just be, yeah. And the thing is he could, when he said related to, now I'm going with most CMSs have that related to section either on the side or the bottom. Now he could just be meaning actually within the body copy of the actual thing. So if it was in body copy, yeah, I would use it within the natural language. Yeah, but you know but what? The, do you know what the weird thing was though? Even if it is in, even if it is like I know what you're saying. What you have is you have sort of an interstitial block that says related articles, and it might list five, yeah. of them, and then it goes back into the article. But the example he gave was like it was related article, and the anchor was on the words related article, and then it was colon five cameras for travel. Like that didn't make sense either. Like normally, what you'd have is you'd have related article as just the heading, and then you'd have yeah. five cameras for travel would be the link. So I yes. don't know, yeah. I don't know why it, it's just seemed a bit odd. Like I think that I think his fear maybe was because he said he has to do this for multiple languages. I'm presuming that he doesn't know what the text is that he's going to make an anchor, and he's worried that he's going to make an anchor on something that is convoluted or too long or whatever. And I, I am assuming then if he can do it on the words related article, it'll always be the same and he knows exactly what to do it on. I'd say that's where it comes from. But to me, I would, I think the risk is very low. I think much better off just leaving related article as a header and just make the name of the article or whatever those words, make them the anchor and, and link through. Like for me personally, I said it in the comments. If I was, if you gave me a choice between the two options he gave, I know I'm not even. There's not even going to be one out of a hundred times where I would pick the 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 option of putting my anchor on related article. If I have a choice, a hundred times out of a hundred, I'm going to go with putting the anchor text on something that makes sense, and that's for both users and for people. But that's that's just my opinion, and I know it started like it went. There was a bit of a back and forth in the comments. I mean. Um, Michael Martinez, who I have the utmost respect for, he gave his opinion on it. He sort of, I get the opinion or the, the impression a little bit that he's he's not he doesn't he's not a big fan of Google, you know. So I understand his perspective in this, but I think from an SEO perspective, most people would probably say to this guy, "Look, link on the anchor text." That's what I think most people would say. Link on on relevant anchor text and not click here or related article. I think we should ask Mas Masataki what he thinks. I think we haven't had his opinion yet. Well, <laughs> as the, in the end, I, th I will go with what makes sense in that particular context. And uh, in most cases, people want to click on things um, or click on things that are descriptive titles if that makes sense so instead of saying related article which you don't know what where you're going to you want to know what that article is about and usually i think it's better to have something shorter and snappier than something that is very long and descriptive so um in this case i'd go for the and I would link the the short text, the short example that he has given. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you a question, though. Would you, if you were like the the choices he's given are that the link is on the text related article colon and then the title of the article. So the link that you click on is the related article words. It's not the title of the the. It's not the title of the the article. It's a very strange setup. I've never seen it. And I'm curious, would you think that it makes it make sense for users? Mm, I think that's a very strange setup. Um, because if I were a visitor, then I would like to click the title, not the related article preceding the title. Yeah. That that makes sense to me. Yeah, he, he, he mentions it's it's for translated content, so I'm pretty sure he's worried about he has to do this manually, I'm sure. Not sure. Yeah. I'm guessing he's doing it manually and he's worried that he's going to do he's doing it for languages he doesn't he doesn't understand so it's a strange question but i think yeah i think we're all pretty much aligned on this to be honest yeah true um yeah 
as much signal as you can with your links. Like you're always going to get better value the more the more signals you can give along links. I can't think of any situations except for when you're spamming, where giving more signals is going to get you into trouble. Yeah, although um, it's likely that you might send a signal uh, um, of, of, of general spamminess if if you if you insist on um, picking up items key, keywords in your body text uh, and um, uh, linking linking from the, the the oldest answer given by any SEO it depends. It depends yeah. who you are because you can get away with some stuff depending on who you are that other people can't get away with, Jim. Yeah, true. All right, let's uh, head on down to number four on our run list. This one from Neil Cheeseman. Um, it's the best practice to delete a URL. He said, when deleting URLs uh, in WordPress, um, he said, and also adding for removal uh, in Google Search Console, is it best to also 410 the URL or not? I don't think it matters. I want to ask a question of everyone because I thought it was going a bit mad. Does anyone remember, am I nuts? or historically at some point, did the URL removal tool in Google Search Console actually remove URLs and not just hide them? Does anyone know? Yeah, they, re they removed them for a certain set period. And if the URL was physically gone at the next time, I think it was like a six month period or three month period or something. And then it would go back and check and then if it's gone, it's gone. And it, you know. You know, I always thought, and I don't know why, the reason I my madness came into this was I have a recollection of a state, a, a, a point in time where you could go into that tool and you could enter a folder and it would physically, like not just as in hide the results, it would actually remove that folder from their index. I don't know why I got this idea or whether, again, I don't know whether it's just my imagination or whether I'm dreaming it, but I always, I had this feeling that at some point in the distant past, that tool worked differently. And it used to be, there used to be a warning, like you can't undo this sort of thing, but maybe I'm just imagining it. No, I remember that warning. I don't know what it was specifically for though. Right. Anyway, I just, it's just something that came to mind with this. It's, it's sort of annoying that, that you've got a tool that says URL removal. Okay, it does remove the URL, but really what it, it's doing is it's hiding the URL. Mm. And if the URL potentially has other problems associated with it, I don't know whether it's great just to hide it. I don't know. It, it sort of depends. I think it makes sense for people who need to get something out of search results very quickly. But as an SEO, very often you're thinking about how can I get stuff out at scale? That's the biggest problem I normally encounter with a bigger site is like I have to get a section out and a section could be like millions of pages that I want to get removed as quickly as possible from the index. I don't want them crawling. So yeah, it's an interesting one. I think 410, by the way, coming back to this, I suspect they do have, they, they do see a 410 slightly differently from a 404. I think that if you want to get something out really quickly. If you can 410 the URL, okay, uh, or the URLs, let's say you've got a folder and you if you can 410 them on your server so that when Google comes by, they'll get a 410. And if you build a sitemap, an XML sitemap with those URLs in it, and you put the last mod date as now, they'll probably come along very quickly and they'll crawl all those URLs and they'll drop out of the index. That's probably the quickest way to get stuff out of the index. It's, if you want to get it out of the search results, yeah, you can use URL removal tool. But if you want to get it out of the index, I think the quickest way to do it is either 404 or 410 on your server and give them give them a manual XML sitemap, just a temporary one that has all these URLs in it, and watch them crawl like mad, and they'll just they'll come out of the index really quickly. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay. Anybody else? 
All right, moving right along, we're looking at number five on our run list. Chris Green asks the question, would this content be considered a guest post? Uh, Chris said, hi, guys. Let's say you are a makeup company and you provide content to a stock list or a stockist, did he mean, um, for their blog. A stock list uh, is someone who's, oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> he meant stockist, someone who stocks your product. Um, with, see, now now you know all this is live. This actually happened. <laughs> um, would this content be considered a guest post? Assuming you don't pay for the publication, you are just providing them with cool content. No, uh, so from my point of view, go for it because Google's going to make the connection. You know, here's the stockers of the product you sell a product, you know, you're providing information on the product to the stock. It, it, it makes perfect sense. Um, and no, go for it. Go for it. Find even other, find other stockers also, you know, that, that stock the product. Reach, hit them up. I think it makes perfect sense. Isn't it a bit sad, though, that he's worried about this? I mean, that, that to me, yeah. is what, what I take from this is that, People are concerned about something that is pretty, you know, it's pretty everyday, pretty normal, and that he's concerned that this might get him into and get him get him into some sort of trouble. That yeah. is, it's a pity. I mean, okay, I'm I'm not going to deny it. Like the the reason for that is marketers, um, like marketers have obviously they've they've done things they shouldn't have done, and everyone has to pay for that. Like, and it's. That's the way of the world, but it is a bit sad that, that that this guy has to he has to worry about this. Like he should just get on with it. Like and he should nearly. I'm not going to say he should ignore search engines, but like really, at the end of the day, the tail shouldn't be wagging the dog, and he should be able to just get on with it and not worry about that. Um, it's just a bit of a shame that that it's come up that people are worried about these things. They they shouldn't, you know. It, it, if it makes sense for users, like. In general, if it makes sense for users, you just go for it. Like it's there's very few cases where you're going to do something that's good for users that Google's going to turn around and go, "We really don't like that." That's spam. I'm sure there's some edge cases, but like this, definitely not. You know what? I always say, nearly all clients, I say the first thing you should leverage is your your very close network, whether that be biz, business associates or friends or whatever it is, because these are the people that like you're going to ask a favor from. These are the people who it's probably the easiest to actually get something acted on. So, you know, if you want to get some content published on their site, if they're already your business partner, it's much easier to approach them and say, look, this will be good for you. It'll be good for us. This is what we can do. Can you help me to do it? You can get in touch with the right people pretty quickly if you do it that way. And like definitely you look at your network and see who are the closest people to you, the partners that you work with or, you know, your suppliers or some of the people you sell to, whatever it is, and see how you can leverage that. Like it's, it's, it's a no brainer. It's low hanging fruit. True. Very true. All right. Anybody else? Okay, when I click this button, yes, it is that time again. Thank you for watching time. Um, look, before we go, I'd like to thank uh, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kappa, and Richard Hearn um, for re reviewing the answers given on the Dam SEO Questions Facebook group uh, for this week. Um, and um, also uh, the people who answers answer questions through the week. I can't name them all, um, but Brenda Michelin and uh, um, Michael, uh, um, goodness me, what's wrong with my head? My Michael, oh, sorry, you give it to me, Richard. No, no sound. And Martinez, right? <laughs> Michael Martinez, yes, oh, I'm such an idiot. Um, of course, at my age, you know, just remembering where you are at any given time is a pretty much a feat. Anyway, we'll uh, be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but uh, for now, it's um, good night. And... Uh,
Thank 